Hi everyone, I'm Andrea, but people here call me Fei Fei. Please like and subscribe! My life was extra special because I had two home countries. Even though I was born in China, during our trip to America when I was seven, I got lost from my family. At first, I was really scared and lonely, but the more time I spent in the orphanage, the stronger and more independent I became. It seemed like this place was filled with my greatest childhood memories. Life went on just fine until I was 15. A miracle happened. Fei Fei, Daddy finally found you! I didn't fully understand how, but tears started streaming down my face. Dad didn't change one bit, but my mom had passed away. So I was introduced to my stepmom, May. Our family's finally reunited. Let's get back to China. I sadly waved my friends goodbye and returned to my home country. We, the Lee family, came from a long line of pottery makers. And this is the fifth generation. Dad said that before his grandparents took their last breath, their dying wish was to preserve the family craft. And as the only granddaughter of the family, I carried the noble responsibility of inheriting this pottery shop. I believe in you. Make us proud. While I was still processing everything, my parents already dragged me to my relative's house for a meet and greet. There must have been 20 people here, and I had to memorize all their names? Grandpa Zhu, Grandma Lian, Uncle Tang, and Aunt... Aunt Hua? Luckily, I still remembered some simple phrases from my childhood and greeted them with my broken Chinese. Then, I heard them talking about a robbery at my house a couple days ago. Dad got a big order to polish 12 vases for the Ming Dynasty, but they were nowhere to be found all of a sudden. The customer wanted to press charges, causing a big trouble for our family. The police were involved, but since all cameras were smashed, it was impossible to find the culprit. The detective in me was woken up, so I ran to where my aunts were to eavesdrop. But before I could ask anything, Dad came and dragged me away. It's none of your business, kiddo. Even if the police couldn't solve it yet, focus on learning the trade. A few days later, I started school. And boy, I thought I was smart, but Chinese characters defeated me. For crying out loud, those dancing letters and accents gave me a nightmare. And I was even reprimanded for using English in class. That's not all. Classes were followed immediately by ceramic lessons. Watching ceramic tutorials was fun, but practicing was a hard slap of reality. The more I practiced throwing clay, the more stupid shapes I created. Ugh, and there's clay all over my face and shirt. Clumsy me. Frustrated, I angrily yeeted a piece of clay across the room, then saw Dad glaring at me with his face darkened. Fei Fei just came here. She can't possibly learn that quickly. Give her some time. But Dad coldly dragged me to the ceramic gallery. You know, pottery is about pouring souls into lifeless clay. Your great-grandfather used to make ceramics for the palace during the Qing Dynasty. In wartime, the whole workshop was bombed, but your great-grandparents saved the most precious vases while fleeing the enemy till they died. Dad's words made me realize how hasty and incompetent I was. I had to change. Then Dad introduced me to a guy. This is Cody, my best apprentice, aka Pottery Prodigy. He'll be your teacher. Cody's American, so communication was much easier. He's a great teacher who would always patiently fix my work to perfection, despite how many times I messed up. Cody's also friendly and easy to talk to. Some days our deep talks lasted until dawn. One time, while I was preparing the kiln, I accidentally found this half-burnt piece of paper in the corner. It looked not so normal because there was some handwriting that seemed important on it. I showed Cody and he said it could be a Chinese poem, but I couldn't figure out its meaning since most of it was lost. Dad said it was nonsense while my stepmom shook her head in confusion, but it somehow still bothered me. So I kept studying it for a few nights and I might have found a clue that could lead to the mysterious missing 12 vases, but that wasn't enough. So I decided to put it aside for now. Back to my daily routine. I was showered in my neighbors and relatives care a bit too much. They always urged me to get married. When I was your age, I had two children already, <laughs> but I'm not even 18 yet. Worse, they even sent some suitors to my house. I've got a gift for you for our first meeting. This chicken lays a lot of eggs. <laughs> if you marry me, your life will be full of roses. I only have one small request. My family wants many children, so we'll need to have five sons, three daughters, and a pair of twins. They got me dizzy, so I sneaked out the back door to avoid running into another lunatic. <sighs> the countryside sunset looked so peaceful. Wow, didn't expect such strong pipes from a tiny body. Creepy much? I turned to leave, but suddenly that guy grabbed my ponytail and pulled out my hair tie. I was going to teach this jerk a lesson, but he somehow dodged every blow. Stand still so I could hit you. Give me a kiss, then I'll give it back. You wish? What a psycho. 
But somehow, now I and this psycho became friends, and we even got closer and closer after seeing each other every day at school. I realized Kai wasn't as annoying as I thought, and even grew sympathy for him when I learned that he also lost his mother when he was little. As his father was busy running his business, Kai was always unhappy and lonely. Now that he had my company, he cheered me up whenever I was sad, and frustrated about not getting better at pottery. However, Cody didn't seem too pleased with this. He appeared out of nowhere and dragged me away. Faye, that guy is a notorious lady killer. Stay away from him. He seems like just a regular dude to me. Okay, to tell you the truth, that guy is from the Wen family, our lifelong nemesis. If your dad knew about this, you're done. I'm a bit concerned, but life isn't a revenge drama. No one can stop me from seeing someone because of some familial feud. Still, I guess I should be careful. Hey, hey, what you hiding? Faye likes a free spirit. A boring guy only plays with clay all day. <clears throat> no chance. Well, I think an innocent girl like Faye needs a calm, mature, and collected guy. Not some free-spirited, spoiled rich boy who only knows how to spend his parents' money. Ah! Every time this happened, I had to throw myself in between them and push them apart. One day, my stepmom caught me coming home after going out with Kai. I panicked and didn't know how to explain, but... Don't worry. Your secret's safe with me. You're stressed out enough. Then she called me in for a detox. She apologized for not giving me enough care and kindly asked if I had any difficulties since returning home. Hmm. Actually, I like pottery, but I haven't improved no matter how hard I worked. The responsibility on my shoulders is so big that it pulls me down. I tried to put up a smile, but there were times that I felt suffocated. Don't push yourself too hard. If it's all too much, take a break and go back to America for a while. A healthy mind comes first and foremost. Wah, I'm so lucky to have an understanding stepmother. As soon as she left, Cody stepped out. I didn't know you were under so much pressure. Don't worry, there are other ways to help your family besides making good pottery. You're smart. I know you can do it. So, I started to practice performing tricks with ceramic faces, then set up a TikTok account to upload videos of my performances. They went viral in only a few weeks, gathering millions of views and propelled the pottery shop to fame. And with that, the number of orders grew rapidly. The national pottery competition was coming. My dad excitedly announced that it was a huge opportunity for our family. Our core team worked day and night to create a unique design that would make an impact. The big day finally arrived and I was tasked with carrying the vase to the exhibition area. I was so excited to be there, but a stranger suddenly bumped into me, leaving me in shock for a few seconds. Oh my god, the face! Panicked, I hurriedly checked and luckily, it's okay. Whew, that was close. The competition officially began. I checked out the other displays. They all looked splendid, but the Wen's family vase literally shocked me to my core. It looked exactly like ours. I went straight there to confront them. This is clearly my family's design. You, you shameless thieves! Watch your mouth, little girl. And you, keep an eye on your daughter. Don't let her bring shame to your family. Don't tell me how to raise my child. And the vase? The thief will soon be exposed. Come on, Faye. I knew the design can be copied, but not the material. It's made with our family's secret technique. We had a special substance that made ceramics more durable. Now we just need a little luck. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner impressed us with its one-of-a-kind design and outstanding quality. The first prize goes to... Wen Family! However, we also found out one team's product is made with substandard material and underfired. The judges also suspect them of plagiarizing the Wen's design. We can't accept such disrespect to the craft. Lee Family, you're disqualified from this competition. Before we could recover from the shock, the news already spread like wildfire. Kai tried to explain that he had nothing to do with this, but I didn't want anything to do with him anymore. The Wen family must have made a copy of our vase and swapped it with ours. But when? It's with me the whole time. It could only be... Our business took a nosedive. Orders were cancelled, most staff quit, and worse still, everyone here suspected that I swapped the vases since some of them saw me with Kai. My dad didn't take that news so well. He had a stroke and was hospitalized ASAP. No, I had to find out the truth, no matter what. Only three people knew the design. Dad, Cody, and me. Right, Cody would know what to do now. Unfortunately, he took some days off to take care of his sick mom, so I decided to come to him again. He'd gone shopping, so his mom welcomed me. Thank you for giving my son a chance and paying him handsomely. Without the money, I might not even be here anymore. <coughs> money? What money? Ah, uh, my son spent sleepless nights for months to complete your vase. Isn't that why you paid him that well? What? We'd never made Cody work overtime. What money is she talking about? 
Right then, Cody got home. I immediately confronted him. He denied everything at first, but then he had to give in. Who hired you? Really, I don't know. They texted me from a blocked number, then wire transferred me the money. Faye, my mom's really sick and I had no choice. I never expect such terrible consequences. I'm so sorry, Faye Faye. I ran away ASAP. I can't hear another word. The saddest thing about betrayal is that it never comes from your enemy. When I got home, my stepmom was cooking. Oh my, you look pale. Poor sweetie. I couldn't help but leaped into her arms and burst into tears. She tried to calm me down before bringing Dada's food. I know I cannot be weak anymore. I'll find out who's behind all this. Whatever it takes! I rummaged through the workshop until late, only to find nothing. Exhausted, I went to sit by the gate for some fresh air and suddenly saw something in the bush. An envelope! Looks fishy. To not leave any trace, I opened it with steam instead of tearing. It's a Chinese poem and had the same style as the one I found the other day. By reading the first letter in each line, I got this message. Yo, Chang, Jin, Mian. Meet at the oil factory, it is. The message coded in the other poem also referred to a place. It's gotta be a sketchy meeting to have its spot written in code like that. I quickly put the letter back and searched for the only oil factory in town, then followed the address to an abandoned factory. I ran straight inside, but it was totally empty. Was I wrong? I felt defeated and was about to leave when I suddenly heard a voice from the second floor. I crept up and saw Kai's father with a gang wearing black and our 12 stolen vases. Right then, a hand patted on my shoulder. What you doing? I turned around to see a creepy face, then pitch black. I opened my eyes with a splitting headache, and my hands all tied up. Who's this? My stepmother, who's arm in arm with Kai's father? Already awake? You, you're on their side? My father didn't mistreat you. This is how you return the favor? I've had enough of your old man. A tyrant and self-proclaimed smart man. I deserve someone who loves and pampers me, like Mr. Wen here. If your father had been truly smart, he would have realized long ago that he had nurtured a serpent in his bosom. That Cody boy. <laughs> Just wait and see. I will expose your scheming. Ha! <laughs> in your dream! I already bought a plane ticket back to America. Be prepared to be welcomed by another orphanage. I even wrote your old man a touching welfare letter. He'll definitely have another stroke once he reads it. <laughs> The secret letter has exposed you, and other evidence will soon be found. You can't get away with this. Do you mean this, feisty girl? In fact, what letter? <laughs> Just then, the wind blew and swept the burning letter to some old oil containers at the corner, setting it aflame. The fire spread with lightning speed. They all ran for their lives, leaving me behind. The smoke was thick, stinging my eyes. <coughs> I was about to faint when... Cody kicked the door open, dashed in, and untied me, while Kai covered me with his jacket. You? You? There's no time! Run! Then quickly carried me away from the fire. When we got to safety, the entire factory exploded. Okay, can you two explain everything now? I... I felt guilty about the pottery competition, so I secretly followed my father to find out the truth for you. I came to your house to apologize, but saw you rushing somewhere looking worried. That's why I decided to follow you. And I can't believe that the person hiring me is your stepmother. Me neither. Anyway, thanks. But I'm still mad at you. Are, Are you, you okay, okay now? now? I'm fine. I'm not sure about them, though. Animators, please replay the previous scene. Yep, I managed to record everything. With this priceless evidence, of course my so-called stepmother and Wen had to plead guilty and go to prison. My father was discharged from the hospital, and our 12 ceramic vases were returned. Now that our family's name's cleared, business is booming. After this incident, I learned to cherish our pottery workshop more. Determined to continue my family business, I started learning pottery properly to prepare for next year's competition. Root for me, peeps! And, of course, I still have these two guys by my side. Only, it looks like they no longer want to just be friends with me. What should I do? Please help me by commenting down below if you're hashtag Team Kai or hashtag Team Cody. I raised the bow, hyper-focused. The target was right in front of me. Watch me conquer. Only... Grandpa! That one would have hit the bullseye! I'm just teasing. <laughs> you're getting real good, pumpkin. 
Hi, I'm Gina, and I love archery. My grandfather, my only family, introduced me to the sport. He always encouraged me to join contests, saying I had a knack for it. But competitions, not really my thing. Talking to strangers was enough of a challenge for me. But my only friend, Bailey, is lovely and cheerful. We've been close since childhood to the day we came to the city for high school and became roommates. My new life promises fun and excitement, but I missed my grandpa dearly and wrote to him often. Dear Grandpa, my life here is wonderful. The dorm room is nice, clean and tidy, and every morning, soothing instrumental music from the speaker reminds me of the times we enjoyed music and a tea together on the front porch. Ugh, Bailey, turn it down. And are you going to do something about your mess? Jeez, it's an organized mess. Ask me about anything, and I can find it immediately. By the way, there's a welcome party for freshmen tonight. Shall we go? Nah, I'm too tired. Come on, Gina, it'll be fun. You'll make some new friends, too. It's just... Okay, stay here then. I'm leaving. Somehow, I felt a bit empty. I'd never noticed that Bailey and I were so different until recently. Bailey's a social butterfly who can make new friends easily. And me? I was introverted and reserved. Hmm, I can't keep being this way. I came to the city for the experience. Duh. So when Bailey asked me to go to the school's fair, I immediately agreed. When the day came, while Bailey's chatting and giggling with other students, I just kind of absentmindedly faded into the background. Since Bailey did not seem to notice my absence, I decided to look around on my own. Suddenly, a scream startled me. Thief! Thief! I turned around to see a thief running away with a girl's handbag. Without thinking, I grabbed a set of bow and arrows nearby and shot at him. That's when I saw another arrow. Flying in the same direction, both arrows hit the thief right on his head and knocked him to the ground. I looked for the other archer and saw the Greek god Apollo, who's also looking at me. Then he went to handle the thief as I took the opportunity to quietly leave the scene. I was still daydreaming about that guy when Bailey barreled into our dorm with a group of friends. I quickly turned myself into a burrito and pretended to be asleep. But Bailey ruthlessly unfurled me with a wide grin. Hey, G, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Samantha, head of the school's archery club. Bailey told me you're quite an archer. Yeah, sort of. Well, we're looking for new members. You should come by. I'll be sure to stop by. Thanks. After school the next day, I visited the archery club and saw a familiar face. That's the guy from yesterday. Ooh, he also blows on the arrow like Grandpa. So cute. Oops, busted. Am I hallucinating or is he walking toward me? Hi, you were at the school fair. Your shot was phenomenal. I'm Chris, by the way. I'm Gina. So you're new here? Actually, I'm not sure if I'm going to join yet. Well, how about a little demonstration? Panicked, I tried to shoot with shaky hands and totally botched it. Sorry. Relax, you got this. He leaned over me and my heart was beating like crazy. I took a deep breath, softly blew at the fletching, and this time, I hit the target. See? Amazing shot. You should be more confident and open up so more people can get to know you. So Chris is into extroverts? He's right. It must be great being around an outgoing, confident girl like Bailey. She'd only been here for a week and already knew half of the school, and everyone loved her. So later that day, after struggling with myself, I decided to ask Bailey for help. Help? With what? Help me be you, an extrovert. You're fine the way you are. Why change? Right then, Samantha came to pick her up to go to a birthday party. Want to join us? Ah, uh, you'd rather stay here and read, correct? You know me. Then Bailey left, just like that. All right, if she doesn't want to help, I'll do it myself. Time to break out of my cocoon. So I spend the next few hours giving myself a makeover. Not bad, was it? When I arrived at the party, everyone gawked at me. Hey, are you the sun? Because your beauty is blinding me. If so, you should stay 93 million miles away from me. As much as I wanted to run straight home, a voice in my head kept screaming, Socialize! On the internet, they said extroverts are always ready to make friends, like Bailey, who's part of every single conversation. So I mustered all courage to throw myself into the largest group who's talking about cute Arctic animals. I remembered a communication tip, lead the conversation. So I did. Isn't it so sad that those animals are losing their habitat to climate change? The next five minutes was me monologuing about the issue, but they didn't seem too interested. Okay, plan B. Bailey also always knows how to stand out, so 
when everyone started dancing, I stood in the middle of the room and danced my heart out. But after that, everyone looked at me like I was an alien, including Chris. When I was finally in my room, I felt totally defeated. Do you seriously want to be an extrovert? I need to, Bailey. If so, maybe take it slow and don't push yourself too hard. You don't have to become outgoing overnight. Ugh, Bailey clearly didn't believe I could do it. Fine, I'll show her she wasn't the only charming extrovert here. My first order of business was joining the archery club. That would be my best chance to impress Chris. To make up for the embarrassment at the party, I braced myself and approached the most playful guy here. Uh, hi, I'm Gina. I like your shirt. Um, thanks. I'm Patrick. Patrick is the student council president. He's here to help promote the archery club. Then whenever Chris passed by, I tried to joke around with Patrick, although he seemed distracted. But Chris just turned away and looked unhappy. Gina, what's the deal with you and that Chris guy? He keeps looking over here. Oh, Chris? He's just a club mate. Maybe it's because he doesn't like me very much. Boy's thing. Anyway, I'm thinking about joining this club. Would you teach me? Sure thing. After that, Patrick and I often practiced our tree together. I got too excited and set the target as far as I could, pulled a string with all my might, and tried to keep my cool as the arrow hit the bullseye. Out of nowhere, Chris popped out. Awesome, Gina. Best shot I've ever seen. Impressive, Gina. Wanna grab a drink before you teach me how to do that? Right then, Chris offered me a bottle. You like apple juice, right? I saw you only drink that at the party. Eee! He noticed! Thank you! Would you like a ride back later? Finally, a chance to get closer to Chris! I'll drive you, Gina. I'm more familiar with that route. I was gonna say no, but Patrick had already pulled me away. Why did he ruin my romantic moment? Maybe he liked me too, but I already had my sights set on Chris. Chris seemed to care about me, but it would take a little more for us to actually be a thing. Everything was falling into place, and I felt like I was becoming more outgoing. Though sometimes I still took detours or hid in the restroom to avoid small talks, things with Chris were going well. But the next day, I saw Bailey and Chris locking arms and laughing happily on the street. Are they dating? Then why did Chris keep my hopes up and act like he cared about me? All my efforts were for nothing. Even if I tried to be like Bailey, of course Chris would prefer the original. I glumly went to my room shortly before Bailey, Holly, jolly as usual, came back. You look awfully happy. Hot date? Nope, not at all. Are we having secrets now? Of course not! Anyway, what are you up to today? Beating around the bush, huh? She's obviously in love with Chris, but why keep it a secret? Just so they could still mess with others' feelings. After that, I refused to talk to Bailey and avoided Chris. Whenever he greeted me, I'd pretend I didn't see him. And if he approached me, I'd go to Patrick or ask him to take me home. It was petty, but what else could I do? In Patrick's car, I got Chris's texts. He probably just wanted to two-time me, so I turned off my phone. Everything okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You're not a very good liar, but I have just the thing to cheer you up. A few minutes later, we pulled up to a quiet spot with a stunning view. But magnificent as the sunset was, I still felt the sadness wash over me. Wanna talk about it? And I did. I really did. It felt good to finally get everything off my chest. Patrick listened patiently, nodding in understanding. When I finished, it's already twilight. Thank you for listening to my rant. Sure, anytime. Uh, I want to be there for you, Gina, and I would never hurt you. I know you're into Chris, but I really care about you. You're a true hidden gem, and I want to help you be all that you're meant to be. I was surprised. At that moment, Patrick became even more attractive than I'd ever thought. Maybe I could, I should, be with someone like him and forget about those toxic people. So, I agreed to date him. The following day, Patrick already made it public. See, that's what a decent guy would do. He took me to the spa, cooked for me, and was always so sweet. I'd never felt this way for anyone, and it actually felt like love. However, it wasn't always peachy being Patrick's girl. He constantly attended tons of events as the student council president and would have me as his plus one. On those occasions, Patrick would talk to everyone while I stood awkwardly. I wanted to join, but didn't know how. All right, laughing would totally show that I'm following their conversation. But everyone just stared blankly at me. What's so funny about my grandma's broken hips? Oh, jeez, I wanted to dig myself a hole immediately. Soon after, Patrick told me to utilize my archery skills for a fundraising commercial shoot. The pictures went viral, and I became popular. 
People wanted to befriend me everywhere I went, and it was exhausting. When I told Patrick, he said, That's good. You'll be the face of this fund, which will help a lot of people, like Katniss Everdeen and the First Rebellion. I'm so proud to have you as my girlfriend. Let's keep this up, okay? Something about that didn't sit well with me. But isn't this the life I've always been dreaming of? I was so busy with Patrick's plans that I had no time left for myself. I even forgot to write to Grandpa, and it had been a while since I last went to the archery club. Bailey tried to catch up with me, but I still ignored her. We grew further apart, even though we shared a room. The show today was suddenly cancelled, so I seized this chance to drop by the archery club. I got more comfortable and liberated with each arrow I shot. I finally felt like myself again. When I was done, I caught Chris staring at me. I was instantly flustered and tried to leave, but Chris followed me. Gina, I don't even recognize you anymore. It's like you're trying to be someone you're not. Are you really happy? You're the fake one. You like social butterflies, don't you? If I stop trying, I'll become invisible again. You just don't like Patrick, and it bothers you that he's my boyfriend. You're right. I don't like him, but it has nothing to do with this. Not wanting to hear any more of his lies, I just stormed off. But as much as I didn't want to believe Chris, his words got me thinking. I found Bailey waiting for me in our dorm room. She looked a bit timid. How are things going between you and Patrick? Everything okay? Of course. You got a problem with us? <sighs> Can you come with me after school tomorrow? There's something I want to show you. I followed her out of curiosity. Bailey led me to the back of the school, then told me to hide in a corner and wait. Then I saw Patrick? He wrapped his arm around Bailey, who promptly pushed him away. Come on, I know you've got a thing for me, Bailey. Why won't you leave me alone? You literally have a girlfriend. Pfft, Gina, I made that chick who she is. A cash grab to make a quick buck off of. That stupid girl still believes that was actually a fundraiser. I could have picked anyone, but the fact that it bothers Chris when I'm with her was the icing on top. I can't be with that obnoxious weirdo, but you? A magnificent work. I can't take it anymore and bolted towards Patrick and slapped him right across his smug face. You are the biggest jerk I've ever met. Uh, you're the biggest loser I've ever met. You have the magnetism of a towel. Watching you embarrass yourself in front of all my friends is painfully terrible. No wonder they snicker about you behind your back. I dashed away in tears as Bailey scolded him. She caught up to me shortly after. I'm sorry you had to find out this way. Recently, Patrick started flirting with me. I couldn't go without showing you his true colors. You can say that because everyone loves you. Even Chris chooses you. And I thought I had a chance with him. It's so unfair. People will never treat introverts like me the way they treat you. <gasps> Wait! You like Chris? Having no energy left to be angry, I slumped down, sobbing. Listen, I'm sorry that I refused to help you become an extrovert. The reason is, you're already amazing, Gina. Since we were kids, I've always admired you. You're smart, patient, and determined. What? Would you believe me if I said I wanted to be more like you? But then I realized that introverts and extroverts have their own strengths, and we do best when we're ourselves. That's why I am who I am, and you should be none other than yourself. I held back my tears as best as I could and hugged Bailey tightly. I'm sorry for misunderstanding you. Thank you for telling me what I need to hear. I returned to my room and saw a letter from Grandpa. He asked how I was lately and why I stopped writing to him. He knew living in a new environment would be difficult, but as long as I understood my own worth, I could overcome everything. He finished his letter by saying he'll always love me unconditionally. Tears welled up in my eyes again. Shortly after, Bailey came back all excited. I have a surprise for you. When we got outside, Chris was already waiting. I was extremely embarrassed and confused to see him. Gina, from the moment we met at the fair, I haven't stopped thinking about you. I was impressed with your archery skills, but before I knew it, I was charmed by your intelligence, kindness, even your shyness. Aren't you dating Bailey? What? Chris is my cousin. He talks about you all the time. I was going to set you two up, but you were already with someone else. <laughs> I couldn't believe my ears, and my heart went wild. At that moment, Bailey received another flirty text from Patrick. Ugh! What am I supposed to do with this sleazeball? Well, well, well. Could you believe it? Bailey let him hear blindfolded for a surprise. Okay, ready for my present? 
Patrick was surely surprised to see me aiming right at him. You better come clean about all the cheating you did. It wasn't cheating. You weren't even my girlfriend, loser. Before he could finish, I launched an arrow right above his head. Lucky for you, my aim was just right. But who knows, a loser like me could have missed. Patrick freaked out and literally peed his pants. Then he confessed to all his faults, siphoning off public funds, love scamming for money, which all had been recorded. As soon as the video was posted, Patrick was boycotted and lost his student council president position. He had to switch schools after a week. I finally felt confident in myself and won many archery competitions. During the holiday, I brought Bailey and Chris back home to meet my grandpa and showed him my many trophies. Remember everyone, be the best version of yourself and the right person will love the real you. I was at the fish market, busy selling some crabs to a customer when I turned around and saw this guy stealing our fish. He quickly ran away. I grabbed a stone, aiming it at the thief, but suddenly a guy appeared and it hit him instead. Hey, what was that? Let go of me! Shouldn't you at least apologize? I looked over and the thief was nowhere to be found. The thief's escaped! You should apologize! But the guy just frowned and huffed off. Hi, I'm Serena, and I was brought up here, in this picturesque fishing town. When I was little, I lost mom and dad to the sea, so grandma raised me. We couldn't afford school for me. Instead, I helped grandma sell fish at the market to make ends meet. But things weren't always easy. Serena, you all right? Yes, I just wish people wouldn't steal. I know. Hopefully it was an extra stinky fish that will give them a tummy ache. That's Edward, my best friend since childhood. Edward's parents are also fishermen, so we naturally bond together and grew up inseparable. Later, Edward and I were busy closing when I heard murmurs and saw Mr. Elbridge, the fishing enforcement officer. Anyone caught poaching striped bass will be given a hefty fine. What? You gotta be kidding me! Sir, it's only considered poaching if they were caught out of season, which they're not! Oh, really? Do you have the legal documentation to overpower my decision? Nope. Thought as much. He's obviously abusing his power. At home, I told Grandma everything that had happened at the fish market. I know it's not fair, sweetie, but maybe one day you could study, become an amazing lawyer, and help the local fishermen. I want to help. I can tutor you if you'd like. That's brilliant. Since then, Edward stayed true to his word and tutored me. He was smart, kind, and so patient in explaining things to me. Time flies, and by the time I turned 13, I had the biggest crush on Edward, but I had no clue how he felt about me. I'll wash up. In the future, I'll always share the housework with you. What does he mean by that? Does he also have feelings for me? The next day, when Edward and I were having ice cream, some kids came in and started making fun of me. Do you know eating too much ice cream makes you fat? Oh, of course you don't, because you don't go to school. <laughs> she doesn't need to. She's still far smarter than you'll ever be. Why did you always stick up for me? Is it because you think of me as a... as a... As a little sister? I need to stop daydreaming. He doesn't have those kinds of feelings for me. Then, when I turned 17, something terrible happened. Grandma felt so sick that she passed away. At the funeral, I felt so alone with all the adults around, and Edward was nowhere to be seen. When everything was settled, Uncle Leon said he'd take me to live with his family in the city. I had to tell Edward, but when I got to his house, it was all locked up. So I quickly slid a note with my uncle's address under his door, then left for the city. As soon as we walked into the mansion, and Clara and Rachel were already there, frowning. Ugh, can you smell rotting fish? Ew, uh, get yourself some perfume, please. Enough, you will make Serena feel welcome here. Please prepare a nice room and everything Serena needs. Uh-oh, not a good start. But then Uncle Leon had to go away for a business trip and asked Aunt Clara to find me a tutor as he was afraid going to school might be a shock for me. I was so excited to finally study and pursue my lawyer dream. However... All the tutors Aunt Clara found were terrible. I actually had to teach them simple sums. Meanwhile, Aunt Clara showered me with errands to run. Suddenly, I saw a blur of a dog and boy and... Smash! You idiot! How am I meant to cycle home with an injured knee? You're hearing this, Rex? How is she going to cycle back home? S sorry I'll take you home. I accepted his offer, mainly because I didn't exactly have much choice. What's your number? Well, that was quick. Stop daydreaming. I need it in case I decide to sue you. The guy, Henry, finally quit fooling around and gave me his number. When we got to the mansion, I caught sight of a familiar figure. Edward! I limped over and looped my arms around him. Who are you? Before I could respond, Henry shrugged his shoulders, then left. 
Edward then told me all about the tragic events that had happened to him. My father made a bad decision to go dynamite fishing. The Coast Guard caught him, but as he tried to run away, his boat smashed into a reef. We needed to move to the city for his treatment. Luckily, I got a scholarship into college here, so I can study and also care for Dad. I'm so sorry it's taken me this long to find you. That's okay, I understand. It all sounds terrible. What about you? So you live in that big mansion now? Is that guy your boyfriend? Henry? Oh, no, no. He's just good because, well, I wanted to tell you that I missed you and I love you, Serena. But you said I'm just a sister to you. I was 13. I didn't understand my feelings back then, but I do now. Serena, not having you by my side felt so empty. Will you be my girlfriend? We started dating and having Edward by my side felt so great. I was complaining about my terrible tutors when Edward suggested he become my tutor instead. That's a great idea. You'll need to prepare an atrocious CV for my aunt to hire you. And it worked. I don't expect you to get very far with this one. She is rather dumb. What's the deal with you two? She doesn't like having me here. Halfway through the lesson, Edward got a call from the hospital asking him to pay his dad's bills ASAP before his condition worsened. I was comforting him when Rachel barged in. Serena, go get me some ice. Oh, hello there. Get out! Who's that? Rachel, my cousin. Edward seemed distracted after that. I guess he was upset about his dad. He told me to continue with my worksheet and went to the bathroom. I finished the work, but Edward still hadn't returned. Was he lost in this massive house or something? I went to look for him and was shocked to see him and Rachel happily laughing together. Hi, Serena. I was just getting some water. I ignored Edward and continued studying by myself. Are you jealous? I was just being polite. Darn it. He knew I couldn't be mad at him when he smiled at me like that. But as we continued studying, I couldn't fully shake away my uneasy feeling. But the next day, I was waiting to study with Edward when Edward won't be coming today. What? I asked her why, but she just walked off. As she left, I heard her ask the maid to bring fruits to Rachel and her new tutor. Huh? Since when did Rachel have a tutor? Sensing something was up, I sneaked over to Rachel's room and spotted Edward? Serena, what are you doing over here? Oh, is stalking your new hobby now? I looked at Edward, but he just sat still, so I ran off with blurry eyes and an aching heart. Edward tried to call me, but I just ignored it. That night, he texted me and insisted on waiting for me. I wanted to hear him out, but I was still so angry at him. Serena, please. Your aunt told me I couldn't tutor you anymore and asked me to be Rachel's tutor instead. I need the money for my dad's treatment. I can't turn this amount of money down. Ugh, my aunt was such a witch. I'm so sorry. I would much rather be tutoring you. You're the only girl for me, but I can't lose this job. So let's keep our relationship a secret, okay? This was no big deal, right? It was me he wanted, not Rachel. Edward's birthday soon arrived, and we have a date at this restaurant today. I was excited when my phone buzzed. Sorry, babe, something's come up. Can't make it. X. It must have been something super important for him to cancel like that. But on my way home, I passed another restaurant and couldn't believe my eyes. Edward and Rachel were sitting together. Rage swarmed over me, and before I could stop myself, I charged in there. Edward, how could you? Jeez, what's up with you? He's not even your tutor anymore. Ask him how long he's known me for. Uh, I was just your tutor, that's all. I couldn't believe this, so I stormed off. I felt like such a fool for ever believing his lies. While running in tears, I bumped straight into Henry. You look like you just got dumped. <laughs> it was the straw that broke the camel's back, so I started crying louder. It's not me. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Please stop crying. Anything you want. Anything. How about the aquarium? It turns out the aquarium was just what I needed. Watching the fish was so relaxing, and Henry was surprisingly a lot of fun to be around. Your parents must be super easygoing to put up with you. Nope. My lawyer mom is way opposite. Oh, wow. That's cool. It's my dream to be a lawyer. Is that so? My school's interviewing for a law foundation course. You should apply. A law foundation course, huh? Should I give it a try? I arrived home feeling better, but Aunt Clara wouldn't leave me alone with her usual mocking routines. You spoiled ingrate! Soon you'll be 18 and I can rid my hands of you! I had enough! So I decided to apply for the foundation program Henry mentioned. It was time to focus on my dream without any further distractions. I studied hard and went to the library for materials. Henry offered to help, and even though I still found him childish sometimes, he was actually quite smart and knew loads about the law. One time, Henry invited me to come watch his debate team. Only, when I showed up and spoke to Henry, I saw Edward walk in. 
My dad's ill, yet here you are with him? Serena can go where she pleases. It's okay, Henry. I got it. Rachel's just my friend. I love you, not her. I just need to earn enough money. Then I'll end this mess with Rachel for good. What he did was still hard to accept, but he wasn't a tough situation. I would be a terrible girlfriend if I didn't support him, right? Despite all this drama, I'd been studying hard, and now it was time for my interview. Only, on my way there, I saw a woman yelling at two students. Watch where you're going, you idiots! Excuse me, but this is a pedestrian crossing, hence the driver's fault for not stopping. How dare you speak the law to me, you little girl! Do you know who I am? But as everyone started buzzing, she had no choice but to drive off. <sighs> what happened? I explained it to him and pointed at the woman's car. He didn't say anything, but seemed quite surprised. We then went to the interview, but when I told the assistant my name, she smiled and said, You don't need to draw a number. Mrs. Shodden was impressed with your profile, so she wishes to interview you herself. It's best you follow the right procedure. I was a bit confused, but Henry knew better than me. Anyway, I had my interview with someone else, and I passed. Yay! Since then, I studied hard, and Henry helped me a lot. On my first oral exam, he even came along to encourage me. Only, as soon as I stepped into the room, I saw that rude woman standing there. Hang on, she's the judge! Nerves wriggled at me, but I kept calm and nailed the exam. But afterward, she charged over to me. Don't expect a pass from me, you manipulative girl, seducing my son to get into this college. Huh? Her son? Who? Mom, you can't do that. The exam's recorded. They'll see you're just being prejudiced. I insist you cut ties with a schemer at once. She humiliated me in front of a crowd and tried to smudge my impeccable reputation. No, she didn't. She was just telling the truth. Oh, and that day, I purposely called her in for an interview, but turned out you intervened. And ever since then, this snake was following you everywhere. So end it at once or leave. So this woman is Miss Shodden? And worse still, she's Henry's mom? Suddenly, Henry grabbed my hand and led me out of there. How dare you! You're ungrateful and spoiled! I only adopted you so I had someone to look after me in my old age. But you know what? You'll never be my son! Don't forget to take your meds twice a day. Seeing him talk back to his mother just to defend me, I couldn't help but ask, Henry, why did you help me so much? It's because mom was in the wrong, and seeing you getting pushed around hurts me a lot. Why, Henry? Because I like you a lot. Let me be there for you. Um, Henry, your mom shouldn't have spoken to you like that, but she was only angry because she cares about you. You should talk to her. I really hope things will turn out fine between them. Henry dropped me home, and now all I could think about was his love confession. To be honest, I do have feelings for Henry, but what about Edward? What about our years spent together? Suddenly, I got a text from Edward, asking to meet up. I guess it was time to sort this out. While waiting for Edward to order ice cream, I got a message from Henry, saying he was coming to my place for some great news. I asked him to come pick me up instead. This reminds me of our fishing village in summer and getting ice creams at the end of a sweltering day. I love you, Serena. I always cherish our memories together every day. Edward, actually, this isn't working. I think we should stop seeing each other. W what Why? I soon realized that something was wrong with our relationship. I just didn't have the courage to face it. We had a special friendship that I cherished and nurtured, but now I think it's time for me to accept the truth that we're not meant for each other. Bye, Edward. I wish you the best with Rachel. As I stepped out of there, I saw Henry waiting for me, and I instantly felt better. I made up with my mom. She apologized for what she said in her temper, and told me that I would always be her real son. Henry, that's brilliant news! Right then, I got a message from Miss Shodden. Serena, I apologized for my behavior. I am most pleased Henry is getting to know such a righteous lawyer in the making. It looks like everything's falling into place. I arrived home, not expecting to see Rachel in a fit of tears. Mom, make her leave! This is all her fault! How dare you bewitch Edward! He's quit tutoring Rachel and now my poor Rachel is distraught! I will keep on hiring you awful tutors and see how long it takes until you break. Ahem, <clears throat> is that so? So Uncle Leon stopped Rachel's allowance and took Aunt Clara's credit cards off her. He also made them apologize to me. I told him about my foundation placement and he was so happy for me and offered to rent me an apartment near the college. It's time to live my dream. Now I just had one thing left to do. Take Henry to visit my hometown with me. This place looks familiar to me. <gasps> I know, I think I came here as a child. Yes, this weird little girl threw a stone at me and then got mad. I suddenly realized Henry was that tourist guy I met when I was 10. Yep, that would be me. 
Henry seemed surprised, then suddenly pulled me in. I guess some things were just meant to be. It's only 6 a.m., but Dad already woke me up. Hurry up, LaDonna. A huge storm's coming. Poor households away the city's plan for food and shelter. Oh, then what's the mayor's plan for my food? But Dad didn't listen and just drove away without letting me have breakfast. Well, I'm used to this anyway. A little backstory. We came from a long line of politicians. My grandpa, my uncles, all worked for the government. My dad actually broke with tradition and became a successful businessman. But I guess the apple really can't fall far from the tree. Last year, he took a sudden U-turn and moved back to his hometown to pursue a political career. And he was elected mayor! Since then, he had no time left for me. Not to mention the judgy eyes I had to face at school. You look fine. It's not you. It's your dad's new policy they're whispering about. Don't mind them, LaDonna. What do us kids know about politics anyway? Here they are, Kira and Troy, my only friends here. In fact, Troy's even in a similar situation. His mom is the chief of police, but he deals with it pretty well. Have you been to the White House? Does the key to the city really open anything? Can you tell your dad to ban homework? Seriously, how could Troy stay calm before these stupid questions? And even the teachers wouldn't leave me alone. They always put me in charge of things. Please, just because my dad has great leadership doesn't mean I do too. As if I wasn't already swamped with chores. Once the last bell rang, I rushed to the grocery store. Since dad's always busy now, poor old me had to take up housework, and it's frozen meals all day every day. But today he'd come home early for dinner, so I'm gonna throw a feast. Except, none of these tasted edible. What's the problem? I followed the recipes very carefully. Did I come home at the wrong time? No, Dad, a perfect timing. My apple pie's ready. You mean that smoking thing in the oven? Oh no, my only ray of hope has also turned to ashes. I immediately ran to the convenience store, grabbed all of the instant foods and dashed home. But Dad's already fallen asleep. He must be exhausted. It's always been him who raised me, as Mom passed away giving birth to me. Now on top of that, he had to take care of this whole town. He needed a partner to share his burden, and I needed to be taken care of as well. Let's see, getting to know someone new with Dad's hectic schedule would be impossible. So, maybe reconnect him with one of his exes? From my aunt, I learned he had two ex-girlfriends. One is Jade, his old classmate who's still single. Two is Alva. No other information. Let's start with Jade then. Next day, I immediately told Troy and Kira about my master plan. That's my Aunt Jade. No way! It's faded! Suddenly, a group rushed towards us, babbling about my uncle being appointed temporary secretary of state. Jeez, chill, guys! They kept flocking around, making me feel suffocated. Panicked, I ran away, and as I turned the corner, a hand pulled me back. Calm down. You're safe from that crazy crowd now. Thanks, but why did you help me? I've been in your position. I know what you're going through. Just like that, I found myself comfortably venting everything to her. It must be hard for your family of two. That's why I'm finding him a wife. Oh, good luck to you then, sweetie. I have to go now. What a lovely lady. If only everyone could be like her. With Kira's help, setting up a date for Dad and Jade was a piece of cake. We both dragged them to the same restaurant, then cued some cliché matchmaking moments. Me and Kira quickly excused ourselves and monitored things from afar. They seemed to have a good time, but as we leaned closer... Huh? Inflation? Food security? Obesity epidemic? They'd been chatting about politics this whole time? Dad! That's exactly why you're single! <sighs> On the way home, I constantly mentioned Jade, but Dad was nonchalant and switched the subject to his meeting instead. Ugh. Another one in 30 minutes. I'll have to stay home alone tonight. As he dropped me off, he added, Find yourself a boyfriend first before trying to set me up. <laughs> How annoying! I then called Kira to inform her that our matchmaking plan had failed, but it took her a while to accept it. You give up too soon. Is it because you don't like my aunt? No, Kira, it's because I know my dad. And if he said no, it's a no. Okay, now plan B. Alva. I did some digging and figured out the neighborhood where she lived. I'll go there tomorrow. So here I am now, completely lost. Except, isn't that the woman who helped me at school? I rushed over and thanked her for the other day, but she seemed a little off. After a lot of persuading, she finally told me the cause of her sorrow, a tragic love story. His family are all politicians, so they can't accept someone mediocre like me. I'm so sorry, but I'm sure you can find someone better. She shook her head, saying he'd recently moved back to town and was still single. That got her reminiscing about the good old days. But sadly, he's seeing someone else. <laughs> Wait a sec. Is that a photo of you two? May I see? 
She showed it to me. My thought exactly. That's my dad. So you're Alva? Yes, but how do you know? Because you're my dad's ex. Just who I'm looking for. I shrieked in happiness, but strangely, she cried even harder, then hugged me. If that's your dad, then LaDonna, I'm not just his ex. I'm your mom. Hold up. What now? So, they were deeply in love despite my dad's family's disapproval. But when I was born, they got even angrier and kicked her out. Yet, this entire time, I thought my poor mom was no longer on this earth. Our reunion was cut short by dad's call. I wanted to ask him everything ASAP, but mom signaled me not to. Honey, don't tell Robert yet. Of course I look forward to our family's reunion, but I'm not ready to meet him. And perhaps neither is he. It'll be awkward for him and the woman he's seeing. No worries, mom. There's nothing between them. The only woman for him is you. Having mom beside me made my life so much better. She's a successful businesswoman, but still puts work aside to spend time with me. We went on picnics, shopping, watched movies together. And her cooking is the best. I devoured the grilled ribs in an instant. It's a thousand times better than frozen food. When I'm around her, I can be myself without worrying about the public's eye. I wish I could skip class every day to stay home with mom like this, but it's not that easy. At school, I excitedly told Kira and Troy all about my fun outings with mom, but they looked rather uninterested. Whatever. Mom will pick me up later and we'll have a blast. Suddenly, buzzing talks from other tables cut off my thoughts. My cat eats faster than her. Indeed, our graceful princess. Guys, don't be fooled. She's in fact a delinquent who skips class all the time. Having a mare daddy is so lucky. If we did that, we'd be kicked out right away. Those mean girls always have something bad to say. I headed toward them to settle this once and for all, but my father's words echoed in my mind. LaDonna, everyone judges me by your behavior. Ugh, fine. They're right, LaDonna. You've been absent quite a lot lately. I, I just want to be around my mother. A good mom would never tell her daughter to skip class. Think about it. There must be a reason for your whole family to be against her. What do you know? They were the bad guys who unreasonably looked down on her. Then why did your dad keep in touch with my aunt, but cut ties with her? So, Kira was still annoyed that my dad and her aunt didn't become a thing? How petty. I walked off, but Troy ran after me. Kira's just worried about you. Also, you're living in the same town as your mom now. You'll have lots of time with her, so don't play truant again, okay? Here, I've marked the important parts we learned during your absence. Troy has always been gentle to me. He's right. I have tons of time for mom, but we can't keep sneaking around like this. My parents should reunite soon. I remembered the story of how my mom first met dad and got an idea. What's so important that you have to come here in this weather? I promised to help out a friend. Please pull over here and wait for me. The friend I was helping was none other than mom. I then waited a bit before telling dad to bring me an umbrella because it's raining too hard. Now it's your turn. Go get him, mom. And just like that, the romantic scene from many years ago was reenacted right before my eyes. My mom was soaking wet, dashed through the rain, then bumped into my father. My dad then bent down to help her up, looked right into her eyes, and dropped her on the ground? I was still in shock when dad charged towards me and dragged me back to the car. How did you know that woman? Um, I asked around. Just stop. Never see her again, got it? His extreme reaction was proof that mom really mattered. They'll definitely get back together soon because they had me, their special bond. That night, I called mom. She must have been really upset. It's all right, honey. I'm used to it. Your dad's family was... Never mind. Your birthday's coming. LaDonna, what do you want for a present? I just want you to be with me. Yes, sweetie. If only we could celebrate as a family. That's it. I insisted dad throw me a huge birthday party. I invited all my friends and acquaintances. When the party began, I stepped on stage and thanked everyone for coming. Lastly, the biggest thanks goes to the people who brought me into this world. Dad, Mom, please join me. I believe you all know my father already, but my mother, Alva Garrix. The crowd began talking and pointing. Now Dad has to acknowledge her. Please, it's a misunderstanding. Miss Garrix here is only an old friend, and it seems she got along very well with my daughter, which is just adorable. <laughs> Let's toast to our little princess's birthday. Unbelievable! He's fully committed to disregarding her! As the guests were busy chatting, Dad pulled me into a room. Ugh, he doesn't have the right to be mad here! Old friend, you're straight up lying! Elva is my mother! No, she's a gold digger! Look, there's no time right now! When do you ever have time for me? Dad just sighed, apologized, then sat me down to tell me that back when he first started his business, it failed, but he didn't want to ask his family for help. 
Mum berated him, saying he was a dumb loser who wouldn't take advantage of his family's power. Unable to change his mind, Mum left after I was born. No, no, that's not it. I'm sorry, Robert. I shouldn't have shown up here. It's all my fault. I... She suddenly passed out. Panicked, Dad and I put her in bed. That night, I checked on Mum constantly, then fell asleep next to her. I was awoken by my phone's notifications, so I quickly went out to check to not wake Mum. Oh my... Hundreds of articles about my dad came up. His old photos with Jade and with my mother were all over the news. The press was saying that he's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Dad's bombarded with calls from dozens of news outlets. It's her. Only Elva has these photos. Dad, look. How could such a frail person do anything? Suddenly, I saw a figure at the door to Mom's room. Dad and I tiptoed over, then grabbed them. Aha! Gotcha! Huh? Kira? Kira claimed that my mom's very suspicious, so she had to keep an eye on her. I swear she's faking it. I heard her on the phone just now. Enough, Kira. You're out of line this time. I don't want such a petty friend. Leave. Kira didn't say another word and just left. So did my dad. The protest at 4th Street is still going strong? All right, I'm coming. It's always work, work, work. Do these strangers matter more to him than his wife and kid? The next day, Troy asked me to meet up at the park for some update. So, I unloaded everything onto him. I can't believe my dad rejected mom just to save face like that. He's not making as much money as when he had his business. Why is he so dead set on this job? I used to think like that about my mom too, but then I realized that she wasn't doing her job for money or fame, but simply contributing to society. I now entirely support her, because it's her life's purpose. It might be the same for your dad. What Troy said lingered in my mind. It does make sense. If dad's all about glory, there's many other ways which don't require him bending over backwards day in and day out like this. Troy's always been understanding to his mom. And me? I've never been supportive of dad when he had to juggle between his job and me. When I got home, mom was nowhere to be seen, except a letter on the table. Mom said she's terminally ill and didn't have much longer. That's why she risked everything to be with me. But now her health worsened. She didn't want me to witness her pitiful condition, so she left. I immediately called her. It's dangerous in this abandoned construction site. Please don't come. I just need you to know I love you, LaDonna. I immediately knew where she was when she said that. I rushed over, but at the entrance, a scary-looking crew approached me. Don't worry, sweetie. They're our friends. Just listen to them. They wasted no time tying me up, then called Dad. As soon as he arrived, Mom dropped her act. Turned out, she planned to approach me right after knowing he was elected mayor. Her wish to rekindle with us was just to use dad, but it didn't work on him, so she's pushing things this far. Sign here and our daughter will be safe. Many people will go bankrupt if that's signed. Don't ever think you could fool me. You couldn't care less about your daughter? Or are you still counting on those useless cops? Ma'am, you underestimate our law enforcers. It's Troy and Kira, followed by undercover policemen coming from all directions. Turns out, Kira actually heard the calls Alva made to her accomplices. She then told Troy and asked his mom to look into Alva. Coincidentally, the police had always been after Alva because she's been involved in a scheme that gave tenants a ridiculously huge debt. She colluded with the former mayor and wanted to continue the scam with my dad now. Before she's taken away, Alva still cried and begged for my help. I was nothing more than a puppet to you. And now you're talking about maternal love? A scammer like you deserves to be brought to justice. After Elva's arrest, I broke down crying. She's my mother. That's the only truth among all those lies. Dad hugged me and said sorry for everything. It's all my fault. I just foolishly fell into her trap because I wanted someone to take care of us. I'm sorry, LaDonna. You went through so much because of me and my job. It's okay, Dad. Now I see how meaningful your work is. I'm proud to be your daughter. And you too. Thank you. I decided to sign up for a cooking class to better support Dad. And this banquet is the fruits of my hard work. But before he could even sit down, an emergency call came. He gave me a sorry look, but I gladly said, Bye, Dad. I'll save you some. I was a little bummed out. But it's his job after all. And if he can't be changed, why not learn to enjoy it? Moments later, these hungry hippos already came. But hey, this just came to my mind. How about Troy's mom? She's also single and would look great with your dad, right? Nah. I've realized he already has a love of his life, serving the community. He's very happy with his choice, so I'll leave him be, for now. That's right. Besides, we can't be family. At least, not yet. Hi there, I'm Maxine Coleman. I'm the only daughter of two world-famous rocket scientists. 
Since I was little, I was brought along each time they made a television appearance, and my plus one was always my best friend, Gail. What's your secret to such success? Well, we've both loved science since we were kids and decided to devote our lives to it. And family is our biggest motivation. It's not rocket science. Whoa, your parents are so cool. On our way home, Dad asked me, So, what's your dream, sweetie? While I was scratching my head for an answer, Gail already said, uh, I want to be a talk show host, just like the, that lady tonight. That's great. You can definitely do it. Don't worry, Maxine. You'll soon know yours. However, both Gail and I had problems learning. While Gail struggled to say a proper sentence, reading and writing gave me the hardest time. Naturally, we both hated school. My parents took me to the doctor, and I was diagnosed with dyslexia. He also said I'd have much difficulty in school and wouldn't achieve high academic results. I was quite upset to hear that, but my pop-pop, who was a high school teacher, wasn't pleased with that remark. Nonsense. Maxine's very bright. Dyslexic or not, she'll succeed with the right method. Since then, Pop-Pop began helping me and Gail study. Each time we finished a book, he'd give us little rewards. He also introduced us to sports, and even brought us to cool places like museums, galleries, and aquariums. From the moment I stepped foot in the aquarium, I knew this place is right up my alley because... Dolphins! Look, it's following me! I immediately told my parents the good news that evening. I found my passion. I'll become a marine biologist when I grow up. Years went by, and school wasn't scary to us anymore. Thanks to my pop-pop, I'm now at the top of my class and excel at biology. Dyslexia didn't have much effect on me. Meanwhile, Gail got rid of her stutter and became much more confident. We're like Superman and Batman, always side by side, working towards our own dream. Professor Coleman, please tell us more about your latest research on marine life. Ahem, this is my life's work, which has been under development for the last decade. We both got into an elite high school, which would be a good jumping pad for our future. But, unlike in middle school where I could learn at my own pace, I had to bend over backwards to have a good GPA, since the curriculum here is so intense. Unfortunately, dyslexia returned due to stress, making things even harder for me. In class, I had to look up the dictionary every five minutes, which slowed me down. One time, I stayed in class during recess to correct all the D's and B's that I'd mixed up in my essay. That alone got me called nerd. On the contrary, the pretty, extroverted Gail already became the face of the student's council, and she still tried her best to help me. That's right, this is just a minor setback. But that's not all. Yesterday, my chemistry teacher asked me to read the lab safety rules. Don't taste or sniff. You should be wafting the spell. What? I mean, smell. Sorry. We're in chemistry class, not potions 101, Professor Snape. That's how Snape became my nickname. All because of that Robbie guy. Everyone loved his shenanigans, and he got away with everything because he's a rising track star. But really, he's the villain in my story. Lately, Gail and I had less time to chat because she's so busy. Hanging out with Robbie. They met when Gail interviewed him for the school paper. Worse still, she often defended him, saying I'd like him once I got to know the guy. Ugh, no thanks. Besides, it seems that Gail's making achievements towards her dream. Meanwhile, I could barely handle studying and getting along with my classmates. Then came a time when every student who wished for a head start into a prestigious university needed to see the college counselor, Mrs. Morales. She said that my grades were pretty good, but I'd also need a good personal statement. It's supposed to capture the essence of who I am and show that I'm ready to commit myself to my future. Simple enough, right? But when it comes to actually writing, why is it so hard? Am I doubting my own plan? Can I really be a marine biologist? At dinner, I tried to bring this up to my parents, but it seemed they're already thinking I'm a marine bio student. Guess there's no turning back now. I called Gail to the aquarium to help me clear my thoughts. She was late, so I went to catch up with my dolphin friends. They actually calmed me down. Suddenly, a screeching voice took me out. You're dyslexic because you speak dolphin's language? <gasps> Should we find Dolphinese books for you? I turned around to see Gail and an entourage of her new friends and that buffoon. They started giggling. No word in the English language could describe how mad and humiliated I was. Did you really need to bring them here just to embarrass me? I walked away, but accidentally headed to a glass tunnel. It felt like I was fully submerged underwater. The horrible memory of the time I fell through ice into the deep, dark, frozen cold water came rushing back. I immediately dashed outside. Max, wait! I turned around to see Gail running after me. Watch out! A car's coming! 
I quickly pushed her away. The car didn't hit her, but she's injured. We brought her to the hospital ASAP. But when she came to, Gail couldn't speak. Her doctor said her vocal cord was temporarily paralyzed due to neck and chest trauma. That meant Gail could no longer present the school sports day. I was overcome with guilt. Gail told me, I'll be alright. Sorry about earlier. I thought bringing our classmates would cheer you up. She even said that I should keep chasing my dream and not let anything hold me back. I was so touched. But somehow, her words made me feel so pressured. I'll even work harder from now on. After that day, Robbie kept following me around trying to apologize. I avoided him like the plague. One day, I even skipped English and when I got back, my classmates were buzzing about some substitute teacher named Mr. Coleman. They seemed so excited, since he didn't make them do any work and only told them fun anecdotes. Huh? That name rings a bell. And later, my suspicion was confirmed when I met with my grandpa's angry and disappointed look after school. I obviously went home to a raging storm, but it didn't matter. I used this chance to spill my guts about how exhausting school was, how annoying it was to be picked on by an absolute moron, all the time while my bestie wasn't by my side. Strangely, Grandpa listened attentively, then simply said he'd handle it. A few days later, he revealed that his way of handling it was making me that dimwit's tutor. Worst idea ever! Even though Pop Pop guaranteed that clown would work with me, I still wanted to kiss that jock with an uppercut. I ranted to Gail, thinking she'd help me out of this. Unexpectedly, Gail also told me to give him a chance. Then, I might see his good side too? Right at that moment, the idiot appeared with a Nintendo Switch. How immature! That's my cue to leave. After the first lesson, I realized any regular teaching method could never hold this dummy's attention. But I can't just give up. Pop Pop taught me that there's no bad students. Fine, I'll find the right way to make him study. So, I showed him YouTube videos on biology to keep him focused, taught him the periodic table song, and talked about world history in his language. In 1914, after the Austrian Archduke was unrelieved, Australia-Hungary declared war on Serbia, and Russia was like, say less, we got you, bro. Then Germany wanted to be the main character and waged war when literally nobody asked. So, you're saying World War I started mostly because the German Empire was pressed about being mid? Yes, brother. After some time, Robbie's grades went from D and F to C and B, while I no longer had to cram like before, since preparing lessons for him helped me remember everything naturally. Studying suddenly wasn't so hard anymore, and maybe Gail was right. This guy wasn't that terrible after all. One afternoon, Robbie shared some good news. Hey, my track meet went so well. Thanks for helping me with my grades, or else I would have been disqualified. Let's celebrate! Congrats! Can't celebrate without Gail! I heard she just got back from the hospital. Let's come to her place and get nuts! Moderately, though. Robbie passionately talked about his great achievement, while I told Gail that we're getting along now, but Gail seemed unenthusiastic. Then she coldly asked us to leave. We were both so confused. I asked Gail's mum and found out that most of her injuries had healed, except for her vocal cord. She's undergoing treatment, but her doctor was unsure how long it would take for her to talk again. Poor girl. Suddenly, Gail rushed out to put a piece of paper in my hand, then ran away. On my way home, I read the note. It's all your fault. If you didn't run, none of this would have happened. I'd rather get hit by a car. It would have only given me a broken arm. It's you who killed my dream. That's Gail's true feelings? Her words cut deep. When Gail returned to class, she didn't talk to anyone, and of course avoided me and Robbie. One time during recess, Mrs. Morales came to me and complimented my personal statement. She even said that if I kept up my GPA, I should have it all in my bag. That means my essay didn't seem as pretentious as I thought, right? Robbie was so happy for me, but I saw Gail's glare out of the corner of my eye and immediately signaled for Robbie to keep it down. At lunchtime, he asked if I was upset because of Gail. Not really. She'll perk up when she gets better. So why the long face? Did Mrs. Morales say you have a bright future ahead of you? I'm not sure anymore. I made myself out to look like someone fully committed to marine biology in my essay, but deep down, it felt like I was lying. I can't even get close to water after… after falling through the ice that one time. I suddenly felt my throat closing and my eyes watering. I instinctively stood up and left without saying another word. I wanted to talk to my mother about this as soon as I got home, but I arrived in the middle of her conversation with Gail's mom. She brought us the good news. Voice therapy worked, and Gail could talk now. That's amazing. Gail's mom said she's waiting for me at the park, so I went straight there. At the park, I saw Gail standing by a pond. Thank goodness you can talk again. I always knew you'd recover for your dream. 
My dream? Tsk, it's turned to ashes. Then Gail told me that although she could talk again, her buttery smooth voice didn't return. Oh no, I was dead inside and tried my best to comfort her. I still believed she could overcome this and regain her voice, the same way she got over her stutter. Easy for you to say. Do you know what it's like to have a demon in your throat? I don't even recognize myself anymore. No, no, you can still- How about you? Can you get over your fear to achieve your dream? Come on now, do it! With each line, Gail put another step forward, pushing me closer to the edge, until there was only a few inches between me and the water. Go on, it's for your dream. What are you afraid of? Gail took one more step, and I fell into the pond. My trauma took over me. I panicked, thinking this was it. Then someone pulled me out. Robbie! You're insane! She could have died! Gail just ran away crying. <laughs> Don't yell at her. I shouldn't have picked at her wound. Also, this should be a practice for when I become a marine biologist. Seriously? Or are you just scaring yourself even more? My family expects this much from me. If I gave up on my dream because of a tiny little accident from when I was 13, I only have myself to blame. Dream this, dream that. Are you sure that's what you really want to do, and not just a six-year-old girl's dream? Robbie's words jolted me awake. It's true that I no longer enjoy studying as much as when I was learning with Pop Pop. Every ounce of effort I put out recently was solely for a far-fetched dream that I'm not even sure if I want anymore. I don't want to disappoint my parents, but I can't keep struggling like this for the rest of my life. But I've held on to this dream for so long and worked so hard for it. What do I do if I give up now? You'll figure it out. Take your time. I used to play football and was sure that I'd become an NFL player. Then at one point I realized that's not my thing, so I quit. And after trying out many different things, I fell in love with track. Change isn't the end of the world. I can't believe it took me this long to realize that it's too early for me to commit. Change is normal. But what if I never find my life's ultimate goal, and I'm just wasting time? Jeez, chill, man. You're making someone like me, who couldn't care less about school, actually enjoy studying. You're living life and putting some good into the world. Ain't no time wasted. No need to be Martin Scorsese. <laughs> you mean marine biologist, right? <laughs> uh, but thank you. I needed that. I came home to see Gail crying to my very concerned parents. Mom jumped to embrace me when she saw that I was drenched. Gail told me everything. Why didn't you tell us? We're so proud of you, and nothing would ever stop us. So, Gail revealed my fear of water from that accident when I was 13, and how much I tried to overcome that fear for my childhood dream. It's so difficult for me to talk about it, mostly because I can't admit to myself that accident left a scar on me, so I'd suppressed my pain all this time. Telling both my parents about it now actually felt liberating. Luckily, they're very understanding and allowed me time to find my true calling. As for Gail, I'm sorry. I was so frustrated with myself that I put it all on you. It's not your fault. Turned out, when Gail ran off, she was hiding behind a bush nearby and overheard my conversation with Robbie. His surprisingly wise take moved her as well. Gail said she'd keep doing therapy for as long as it'd take. Yes, I believe in you. If voice therapy doesn't work out, becoming a heavy metal rock star doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> wow, really? I thought Robbie was talking for a second there. After that, it was business as usual, but there's less pressure on me. I actually made a new friend this year and got closer to my best friend. Gail's voice is improving, and she's also having fun exploring other avenues besides talk show host now. Summer came in the blink of an eye, and I decided to volunteer at a school for students with learning disabilities. I wanted to help other dyslexic people like me learn to the best of their ability, the same way Pop Pop helped me. It sounds like a good start for my own self-discovery journey. That could be my dream job. If it's not, I'll keep looking. Anyo SAO! I'm Min Zee from Seoul. Do you believe conspiracy theories are real? Because I do. Before I tell you my paranormal story, please like and subscribe. Nothing much to say about myself. I'm timid, introverted, but above all, I have a big ambition to webtoon horror category. Ahem! It's one of a kind, right? I've spent sleepless nights on that. Go kneel in the hallway for 30 minutes. Now! Aw, oh, man. Creepy Mincy is at it again. She wants to haunt the whole class with those ugly doodles or something? Ugly? Well, not as ugly as your... your grandmother. The whole class gasped at my insensitive words. But it's that girl. Supin's fault first. 
No matter how invested I was into my draft, it only ended up another chance for Sue Pin and her posse to laugh at me. And well, thanks to my poor communication skills, no one wants to be my friend. Well, except Ha Jun, my childhood friend. He's always been so nice to me, not to mention he's handsome, friendly, and smart. You could tell I had a crush on him, right? But of course, I have no guts to tell him. <sighs> One day I was riding my bike around when I suddenly saw flyers from Blackwood Publishing, the biggest publisher on Webtoon. They're looking for a comic collaborator. Oh, wow. I could send mine to them. But would I stand a chance? I bet the candidates are way more talented than me. As, I guess I better stop dreaming. Just then a skater kid dashed towards me. I managed to dodge him, but ended up crashing onto the pavement fence. I felt myself flip through the air and then everything went black. When I opened my eyes, I found myself on the hospital bed. Mom and Dad were beside me. They looked like they couldn't believe it, then burst into tears. Mincy, honey, you're finally awake. Thank God, you've been in a coma for the whole month. We were worried sick. Hold on a sec. A whole month in a coma? Was I that seriously injured? It took me a few days to recover and process all of this before going back to school. Bet these kids didn't even notice I was missing class for a month, though. But suddenly, someone sprung on my back. Supin? Oh, here you are, Urichingu! Let's go shopping today! The dress you picked me last time was perfect for my date! W what dress? Am I friends with these mean girls now? And not just them. Everyone else seemed to be friendly to me all of a sudden. They gave me cookies, carried my food tray, and even lent me their notebooks. It's weird, but kind of nice, though. <laughs> Except the only person I cared about just straight up ignored me. Hey, Hajun, wait up. Are you all right? I'm fine. It's none of your concern anyway. Oh, I just want to check in on you. <sighs> Could today get any weirder? Yes, it did. When I came home, I suddenly received an email from Blackwood Publishing. Congratulations! Your digital comic is now officially published on our website. To celebrate your success, please come to our office tomorrow. Huh? Is this a prank? I quickly checked, and it's not. My comics were literally on the headliner. But how? I mustered all the courage and went to the publisher. One step in, and I was overwhelmed by all the facilities. It was all so new to me. But just then, a group of people flocked around me and babbled to me nonstop, like they'd known me before. Yeah, our faith boy group BOF, Boys Over Flowers, is holding a concert tonight. Those opas make my emo heartbeat like crazy. Hey, you should come with us. It's gonna be so much fun. Eek! Oh, but didn't those boys only lip sync and dance half-heartedly? I even heard people say it's a waste of money going to their concert. Guys, did I say something wrong? Suddenly, I got this chill down my spine. Someone's hands were crawling around my waist. My boo-boo's here. Ah, pervert! I turned around and slapped him in the face. Oh, why did you do that? It's me who should ask this. Why did you touch me? Are you serious? Wait, are you still sulking with me? What? I'm sorry, okay? Now your boyfriend's ready for some snuggles. Boyfriend? Last time I checked, I still had the biggest crush on Hajun. How did I settle for this dandy? The guy was extremely clingy. He wouldn't leave me alone for a sec. Um, don't you have any work to do? Work? I am. I'm tending to the artwork of my life. You! <laughs> uh, sure. He also kept insisting on seeing my webtoon draft to help me polish it. Help my butt? He only messed it all up. Not to mention, everything is completely new to me, but everyone acted like I'm so used to all of this. This didn't feel right. Later the day I told my parents about this, and they said the doctor did mention possible memory loss due to brain injury. Hmm, makes sense. But why did they seem all anxious? Over the next few days, I tried to cope with my new life, even though it didn't make any sense at all. Like, I now had my favorite seat in the canteen. You nerds are sitting on Minzy's spot. Move! And apparently, I got a new hobby of skipping school now. What's the matter? You've done this so many times before. <laughs> Why did I even do this? Hajun, on the other hand, still kept distance from me. Until today, we had a project discussion. I tried to break the ice, but he only replied coldly. Why are you here? This whole month you've ditched me to hang out with your hot friends. And now you suddenly want to talk to me again? The, the whole month? What do you mean? You suddenly turned 180 degrees and became this attention seeker. You even pulled stupid pranks on those mean girls and got them to worship you as their leader. B but I was in a coma the whole month. <laughs> You're kidding, right? No. Why would I joke about something like that? Then who was the Mincy I saw every day at school the past month? Was he saying I was in two places at once? 
How is that possible? Ha Jun came up with a bunch of conspiracy theories, then concluded that I had an imposter, and she had been replacing me while I was in the hospital. It made perfect sense, but so bizarre at the same time. Seeing how freaked out I was, Ha Jun gently comforted me, saying he'd help me figure this out. I knew it. He still cared about me deep down. While we were discussing, Su Pin and her clique came interrupting us. Hey, Mincy! What are you doing with this geek? Remember our group meetup today with the Ansan Highs boys? Meetup? Uh, no, I don't think I can- Of course she remembers. Can I come too? I'll keep my mouth zipped. Fine! Now hurry up! Psst, what are you up to? Your imposters must have known about this meetup, so she might be there. This is our chance to catch her. Except, the imposter was nowhere to be found, while I was stuck with these self-obsessed dudes. Where's your sass, Mincy? Introduce yourself! Oh, um, hi. Uh, I'm Mincy. You can call me Sugar Mincy, because I'm sweet as pie and you sure want to take a, a bite. The whole room was dead silence. <laughs> Girl, you got no riz. Wonder why you can't date anyone. Everyone was laughing at my face. Luckily, Hajun grabbed my hand and took me out of there. Here's much better. But I couldn't help but thinking how my life had turned upside down because of that imposter. You all right? You don't have to force yourself into a mold that isn't for you. You're special for who you are. And I prefer this you rather than that imposter. I could feel something churning in my stomach. I'm so glad I always have him by my side. The next morning, Su Pin and her clique suddenly came to apologize for laughing at me. But why? Uh, didn't you come back last night and snapped at us? Told us to publicly apologize to you today? I did? So the copycat did come to the karaoke. Did she intentionally stalk me? Later that day, I went to tell Hajun about this. But why did she have to do that? I mean, she tried to stand up for you, right? I don't know. It must be part of her scheme or something. I have to find her ASAP. Suddenly, I got the notification of the Mean Girls live streaming at a cafe. Wow, guess who it is, guys? Oh, our little rich lady is a waitress. And she dared to look down on us all the time. She steered her cam towards the poor girl they were talking about. And she looked exactly like me. It's her! Hajun and I immediately rushed to the cafe and saw Su Pin and the imposter was about to jump at each other. What's going on here? Mincy? Wh what? Why are there two Mincy's? <laughs> it's a g g g ghost! Guys, run! You! Who are you? And why did you pretend to be me, you imposter? Mincy, finally we meet. I'm your twin sister. Minha. S sister We're related? But mom and dad never told me I had a long-lost sister. Because you're adopted. They didn't know you had a twin sister who just got adopted before you. You're lying. I'm not. I didn't know this either until my mom was in her final moments. Mom had been sick for a while. So one day she called me to her bed, told me the truth before she drew her last breath. After that, I came to find you. But you were already in the hospital by then. You did wake up after surgery, but once you saw me, you immediately had a seizure and fell back into a coma again. Your parents and I agreed it was best for you if I stayed away and waited until you fully recovered. Meanwhile, you decided to live my life for me? Believe it or not, I actually wanted to know what my long-lost twin sister's like. How she's doing? Turns out you're a very talented comic artist, but you're always so insecure. And you're not doing well with the kids at school either. So I wanted to help you out. Sending your webtoon draft, working at the publisher, and fixing those mean girls' wagons. I just went with it and ended up getting too wrapped up. Really, did you get wrapped up in dating a random guy under my name too? And what about school? Did my parents agree to let you replace me? It was my idea and I persuaded them. They're just worried about you. I didn't ask for any of these in the first place. Thanks to you, I've become a stranger to my own life. You're happy now? Then I ran away, never wanting to see her again. Still, the worst part was, my parents lied to me. Why did you do it? You didn't tell me I'm adopted, and now you let a stranger replace me? Do you really see me as your child? Minty, honey, of course you're our daughter. Nothing could ever change that. We were afraid you'd be sad if you knew you were adopted. Truthfully, we love you more than you can ever imagine. It's a lot to process, but I had to be strong and stay focused. But soon, whisperings caught my ears. Did you notice Mincy recently is different and even a little bit dull? Where's the cheeky Mincy we're used to? Hey, do you get that bad vibe from Mincy lately? Somehow she'd gone back to being a sullen, creepy nerd again. God, why did everyone keep comparing me to that imposter? Hey, you alright? No, I'm not. 
Everyone seemed to like Minha and she'd only been here for a month. But nobody cared about me. I do care about you. You always got me. Your handsome friend, ready to the rescue. <laughs> Whatever you say. Come to think of it, your sister only meant well. Despite her way, all she wants is to help you to be more open and show your hidden talents to the world. What Hajun said got me thinking that night. Maybe he's right. If it hadn't been for her, my webtoon would have been forever locked in my iPad. Besides, she's only got me as a family. I've got to see her now. Hey, I came to apologize. I could see you only meant well. And I was only acting ungrateful. I'm sorry. And also, thank you, Uni. There's nothing to be sorry about. It's my fault too for acting on my own and getting myself to fall in love with Si Wu. I haven't told him yet, but I will find the chance. Sorry for dragging you into my stuff. I leapt into her embrace and felt the happy tears running down my cheeks. After the teary reunion, we spent hours catching up with each other. It's like we're reading each other's minds. Must be the twin bond. <laughs> I even invited her to my house and we had a good time. For the next couple days, I only focused on the webtoon and getting to know myself better. With Hajun's help, I now felt more comfortable and confident speaking with others. One day at the publisher, while I was having a little chit-chat break, a colleague rushed in. Minzi, Minzi, did you hear the news? Your webtoon won the first prize of Comic Award. Comic? The most renowned award in webtoon? Oh my god, I'm dreaming, right? My hard work finally bore fruits. I was celebrating with my colleague when out of nowhere, Si Wu dragged me out. You better announce me as the co-author. I helped you with the sketches, the script, the coloring, yada yada yada, remember? What? You were only messing it up. Do you even know what the story is about? Babe, don't challenge me. Or else, I would tell the director, aka my dad, to kick you out. And by the way, let's break up. Excuse me? You really think I like you? Oh, please. I only do it for your webtoon, babe. Grr, that dandy jerk. I knew he was no good. But what could I do now? Later, I told Minha everything, and she was heartbroken and begged me to help her sneak into Siwoo's office. So I did. Siwoo, please don't leave me. How could I live without you? Oh, it'll be hard, because I'm irresistible. <laughs> but you gotta let go, babe. You have nothing else to offer me. I already know you don't love me, but I do love you. And I already put a love spell on you. You'll forever be haunted by me. <laughs> Then, Minha fainted, crashed on the floor. Scaredy cat Siwoo was freaking out. Hey, hey, you're not gone, right? Suddenly, the light turned off. What in the Holy Spirit's going on? The light turned on again, and the guy stopped screaming until he saw me. Hi, babe. Ah, what? Why are, what are you? You don't recognize me. It's me. Minji, in spirit form. Stay the heck away from me. After every despicable thing you've done to me. Please, please. Come with me, you crooked. To, to, where? To the other side. He was so scared his eyes went white. Then he fainted. <laughs> Serves you right. And let me introduce my Ekip with Minha, who should win Oscars for that performance, and Hajun, who's behind the light effect. Didn't think of that, did you? After that, Siwoo kept insisting I was some spiritual force that haunted this place. Then eventually, he quit the job. And of course, I had the full copyright of my webtoon and was eligible to receive the comic award. My career has just begun as I decided to continue to work at Blackwood. Mom and Dad also decided to adopt Minha into our family, and we could finally be together. That's the magic I wanted to tell you. This unexpected event changed my life for the better. Chance doesn't come twice, right? You have to grasp it. By the way, I want to ask, do you guys have any unexpected events that changed your entire life? Tell us in the comments below. Hang on, here's one more thing I have to do for the old shy me. Hajun, uh, I've been wanting to tell you something. The past event got me thinking, if I don't start telling you how I feel now, I might regret it later. So, Kim Hajun, I like you. So, so much. Finally, it took you that long. When you were in hospital, you weren't the Minzi I knew, which freaked me out thinking what if I couldn't see the real you anymore. It's comforting that you're still here, because I got a huge crush on you too. Why did this fence have to be so high? Oh no, that didn't sound good. It was time to get out of here. But, ugh, I seem to be stuck.
Suddenly, a security team was blinding me with a flashlight and telling me not to move. Not that I could anyway. <sighs> they dragged me down. Then the next thing I knew, I was being pushed into a chair and interrogated by security guards. But all they got out of me was silence. A few minutes later, Mr. and Mrs. Langston showed up. Yeah, they're the wealthy couple who owns this mansion. They're the people that I was looking for. I suppose I did owe them an explanation. I'm sorry for this disturbance, but it's not what you think. I saw your job advert for a housemaid, and I wanted to apply. But the guard said I was too young and refused to let me in. The thing is, my dad has a rare heart condition, and if he doesn't receive treatment soon, then chances are he won't make it. I really don't have any other choice. So please can I have the job and also six months salary advance? Right at that moment, a girl my age fell into the room, peered at the Langstons, then started laughing. Carla, this is not acceptable. Aren't you ashamed of your appalling results for the Francis Academy entrance exam? You should be studying hard to redeem yourself, not out partying at this hour. This Carla girl just rolled her eyes at them, then wobbly walked off. I noticed Mr. Langston comforting his wife, who seemed to be in much distress at the girl's inconsiderate behaviors. So this must be their daughter then. They sure seem to take her education seriously. And she applied to my school. Hmm. That gave me an idea. You know, if you want to improve Carla's academic performance, I can help you. They both gave me skeptical looks, so I showed them my academic records and told them how I was a valedictorian and had successfully scored a scholarship at Francis Academy. On hearing about my achievements, any apprehensions they had soon faded. And so, they'd come up with a plan. A risky one. They would pay for my dad's hospital fees until he fully recuperated if I took on the identity of Carla and flew to South Korea to study at an international high school there, while Carla would take my place and enroll at Francis Academy just as they wished. This deal sounded like the answer to my prayers, but I knew it would be tricky. Pretending to be somebody else in a completely different country was beyond my understanding, so I agreed to do it, but only on two more conditions. First, a guardian must be present who would take care of all my paperwork and stuff. Second, after I completed the deal and returned, the Langstons had to help me get into my dream school, the prestigious GBA University, obviously. They gave it a thought, then shook my hand in agreement. It looked like we had a deal! The next thing I knew, I was in an elite neighborhood in Seoul, Korea. Whoa, talk about luxury! So this was what it felt like to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth. Mr. Preston dropped me off at school and repeatedly told me not to draw attention to myself. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, by the way, Mr. Preston is the Langston's lawyer, and according to the contract, he's also my guardian. He seems oh so serious, but I guess he's okay. Whoa, this school looked so modern, the architecture was a work of art all in itself. I wandered around the endless corridors and tried to find my class. Everyone seemed quite friendly, and the class president, Minjun, even gave me a guided tour. All the students' outstanding paintings, photos, and models were displayed all across the campus. Countless classrooms of different subjects, from science to art, just made me gasp in awe. I was admiring the artwork, when suddenly Minjin blurted out, Sorry, I've got to go. Miss Lee is looking for me. It'll only take a few minutes, so wait here for me, okay? Then he rushed off. So I lingered around the hall. That's when I spotted a group of girls nearby. I recognized the one from my last class. I'm sure her name was Isabella. I was about to walk over to greet them when I realized they had this one girl cornered and were making fun of her hairband. Ugh! Where did you get that horrid thing from? I suppose it must have come from some thrift shop or something. I heard that's where poor people shop. <laughs> Ugh, this whole thing disgusted me. 
they outcasted someone just because she didn't come from ridiculously rich households like them? <sighs> I knew that poor girl's feeling all too well. I gotta help her! But I didn't want to get anyone's back up and draw attention to myself. Hmm, what could I do? Ah, got it! Hey, the teacher's coming. I'll stall her for you guys. Run! My plan worked a treat. As Isabella and her friends nodded at me, then rushed off. I then went over to the girl asking if she was okay. Get away from me! She flinched me off her and then ran off. Huh? I was only trying to help. As I turned around, I saw Minjin looking at me. A bit impressed, I think. He told me that the students here were divided into two groups. 90% are rich, and the remaining 10% are poor kids entering under scholarships. Most of the students are quite friendly to each other. Well, except those I just witnessed. Isabella's part of the rich kid group, who think their upbringings make them superior to others. She's often mean to the 10% group, as she believes they don't deserve to be here. And as you can guess, that girl they upset? She's called Susie. She's in the 10% group, and she's the smartest student in our year. What nonsense! School is school! We're here to study and should all be treated equally! Too right, new girl. I knew there was something different about you. The next day, when class was over, Isabella tapped on my shoulder and thanked me for the warning. Then she asked me to join her group for lunch. I was about to politely refuse when Minjin appeared and asked me to join him. Phew. Thanks to Minjin, I had an excuse to quickly flee the scene. However, I did look back and see that Isabella was giving this offended look. After that, Minjin and I started hanging out more. We soon became close friends, and we both decided that the dynamics around here needed to change. So, we set out to help the 10% Club. One lunchtime, Isabella and her clan purposely bumped into this boy, causing him to spill food all over himself. While they laughed and pointed at him, I rushed over there, took the food, and slammed it onto Minjin's face. Minjin immediately understood my intention. Then he also took a handful of noodles and smeared it all over Isabella. Cue the canteen erupting into one big, messy food fight. <laughs> Another time, the school was preparing for a cultural fair. One boy from the 10% group had this awesome idea to open a food stall serving traditional dishes from different countries. Everyone agreed, apart from, yep, you guessed it, Isabella and her snooty besties. Such a peasant. Too used to working as a waiter to serve others, huh? I winked at Minjin. Then we stayed behind and secretly wrote Isabella and her friend's names on the list of participants and submitted it to the teacher. Now, they had no choice but to serve food at the super crowded fair. The funniest part was they finally got a taste of their own medicine when the 10% group made the most of ordering them around and complaining. Ew, this ratatouille is too bland. Add some more salt. And this milk tea is too sweet. Start a new batch with less sugar. I have to admit, I was enjoying watching the mean kids squirm. But I guess my enjoyment hadn't gone unnoticed. As afterward, Isabella approached me. Those peasant kids aren't at the same level as you and I. I suggest you put more care into who you choose to associate with, or you could end up being treated like they are. Whatever. I just rolled my eyes, walked away from her, then continued to hang out with my friends in the 10% group. Isabella and her minions gave me dirty looks, but due to the Langston's name and fortune, that's all they could do. Just like that, my high school years passed by. I had some great friends. And guess what? Yep, I was now dating Minjin. I loved being here in South Korea, and I'd even grown fond of Preston who, despite being a grumpy gut, now felt like family to me. I mean, don't get me wrong, I missed my family back home like crazy. But Dad was getting better now, and we regularly FaceTimed. As amazing as my life was now, deep down I always felt like I was living in a dream. None of this truly belonged to me, and everything would be over as soon as I left this place. And eventually, my last week here arrived. As I was studying for my last ever exam, the SAT, 
I received a message from an unknown number. I know your secret. Drop out of the test, else I'll expose you. What? Who could it be? I called the number and a distorted voice answered the phone. I begged them to tell me why they were doing this, but they just replied, You don't need to know. Just do as I said. Then they hung up. Luckily for me, Preston isn't just an amazing lawyer, he's also a tech genius. Thanks to him, we tracked down the location of the phone. Hmm. I bet you're just as curious as I am to find out who it was. And now is the moment of truth. Huh? No way! Standing there looking startled was... Susie! Why would she do this to me? It made no sense. I mean, I know we weren't friends, but I had nothing against her. Why did she despise me to the point of willing to ruin my life like this? Please let me explain. Ever since you arrived here, I lost my top spot at school, which means I've also lost a full scholarship to college. My family will never be able to afford it themselves, so I decided to investigate you. And that's when I found out that you were not the real Carla Langston, and you got paid by her parents to achieve all these academic records for her. I get why you're upset, but you didn't have to blackmail me. You don't strike me as someone who would do such a thing, so it's kind of disappointing that you did. I'm not. I... I'm a dead end, Irene. You have to understand. This is my entire future I'm losing here. And what for? So some rich, spoiled girl can get into college without doing any of the work? <sighs> it seemed like I had a lot of thinking to do. In the end, I realized all I felt towards Susie was pity. This was all my fault. And it wasn't fair for someone as capable as Susie to have her entire future ruined because of me. So I had to be the bigger person here. I decided to ask the Langstons to give Susie the spot at GBA University, which was previously reserved for me as part of the deal. I mean, no worries. With this big brain, I could easily get in there on my own, right? And so, as soon as I was done with the test, I quietly left South Korea behind without saying goodbye to anyone, including Minjin. Susie and I boarded the same flight back to the state. She couldn't help but thank me all the way there. And, well, let's just say, by the time the plane landed, we became good friends. But things didn't all go as swimmingly as I intended. It turned out Carla was even more negligent than first thought. All she managed to get was a high school diploma with shockingly bad grades. These were now my bad grades. My dream of attending a prestigious university was over. <sighs> I just have to make do with a community college instead. A year flew by, and there wasn't a single day that I didn't think about South Korea or Minjin. I couldn't talk to him anymore. I promised the Langstons I'd cut all ties with my life there. I mean, Susie was the exception. One day while going out with Susie, she was showing me something interesting on Facebook when we happened to scroll past a post of Minjin's which read, Finally I found you, the love of my life. My heart sank. Wow, it looked like he'd found someone else, while my heart still pined for him. <sighs> but life still goes on, and a week after that, I was waiting for Susie outside of her college daydreaming how this could have been my life, I saw a familiar face heading towards me. Was that... Minjin? But wait! He was with a girl. Carla! Hang on, his Facebook post was about her? The love of his life was Carla? I couldn't do this right now, so I willed back tears as I took a deep breath and turned to walk away. But suddenly, I felt a hand pull me back. It was Minjin. It's really you. I finally found you. I've been looking ever since graduation, and then my information led me here and to... Me! Carla appeared next to him and smirked at me. Hey, who am I to stop the course of true love? So I told him your real name and helped him search for you. I mean, you're smart, so I figured you'd attend this university too. No, you messed up my grades, remember? Anyway... It doesn't matter anymore. I turned and looked at Minjin. I'm so sorry, Minjin. 
I wanted to tell you everything, but I couldn't. He took my hand in his and gave me this adoring smile. I found you. And trust me, right now, that's all that matters. Ah, now what better way is there to spend a Saturday afternoon than lying on the couch watching a feel-good movie with lots of snacks? Ugh, I suppose I better get that. O-M-G, who is this? He's the most gorgeous boy I've ever seen in my life. I stared at him in open-mouthed amazement, but then I saw him gazing back at me and realized I needed to say something. Hey, how may I help you? Hi, I'm Jaden. My mom and I have just moved in next door. Oh, in that case, welcome to the neighborhood. Jaden smiled as he held a box out to me. W was this a g gift for me? Already? I took it from him and blushed out a thanks. I opened the box and saw that it was full of delicious-looking cookies. My mom baked them. She finds that people tend to be far more welcoming when it involves cookies. We chatted for a bit longer. Then he said he had to go and help his mom unpack. Aw, why did this moment have to end already? The next day at school, I couldn't wait to find my bestie Stella and tell her about my drop-dead gorgeous neighbor. But as it happens... She found me at my locker and immediately started gushing about this hot new boy. Hmm, I needed to see how handsome this guy was. My chance came at lunchtime when Stella pointed over at the new boy who was currently being pestered by Anna, this stuck-up girl from class. I squinted my eyes. O-M-G. The hot new boy was none other than Jaden. I watched on as Anna fluttered her eyelashes at him, then flicked her hair behind her back. Ugh, she needed to give the flirting a break. It was so tragic. Suddenly, Jaden saw me, smiled, then hurried over to me. Hi, Laura. Oh boy, am I glad to see you. He leaned in close to my ear and whispered, That girl is kind of freaking me out. Please, can we get out of here? Then to my surprise, he took my hand and led me away. I could see the shocked look on Anna's face, and I couldn't help but smirk back at her. Ha! Huh, take that, Anna. He's holding my hand, not yours. Then after school, Jaden and I walked home together. Turns out, as well as being the hottest guy on the planet, he was also really sweet and funny. <sighs> back home, I saw Jaden's mom. Cynthia watering her window box. On seeing us, she waved us over, then insisted on inviting me inside for homemade lemonade. We all got on so well. Looks like I'm going to have a boyfriend soon, one whose mom loves me. <laughs> From then onward, Jaden and I hung out lots. We had lunch together, we went to the library together, and always walked home together. I was pretty sure the girls at school were super jealous, especially Anna. One day, during P.E., the teacher told us we were playing dodgeball and assorted us into two teams. Anna, who was on the opposite side, wouldn't quit aiming at me. I tried my best to dodge her throws, but bang! She got me! Now, listen to me. Guys like Jaden don't like ordinary girls like you. He's mine, so quit chasing him. Furious, I yelled. I'm not chasing him. He's already my boyfriend. Um, actually, not. Yet, I was pretty sure Jaden liked me, too. Just you wait. He'll soon tire of you and come running to me. Ugh, Anna was so annoying. I needed to get my frustrations off my chest, so I ranted to Stella about her. Forget Anna. No one likes her anyway. As for Jaden, it's obvious he likes you. He's just new here and probably feels too shy to ask you out. Yeah, you're probably right. He must just be shy. But, ugh, I know Anna won't quit chasing him. Then you should make your relationship with Jaden official. Stella had a point. If Jaden was too shy to ask me out, then maybe I should take the initiative. Then Anna would have no choice but to back off. Ha! 
tonight was the night. So I texted Jaden, I need your help with something. Let's meet at 8 p.m. by the slide in the park. But then he messaged back saying he couldn't meet tonight as he had to help his mom with something. Right that moment, my dad arrived home earlier than usual and announced that he was taking me and my sister Megan out for dinner. Ooh, this restaurant looked nice. I walked in alongside Megan and... Huh? What were Jaden and his mom doing here? Then my dad walked over to Cynthia, kissed her on the cheek, and said, Hello, honey. Jaden and I shared astonished looks. Then we peered at the adults for an explanation. Laura? Megan? This is Ms. Green, the lady I told you about. What? I mean, I knew Dad was dating a woman named Ms. Green, but I had no idea she was Jaden's mom. Then, before we knew what was happening, Dad got down on one knee and pulled out this diamond ring then asked her to marry him. And you know what? She said yes! Oh, no. No, 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 no! They can't marry! Because then Jaden will be my brother! Megan looked delighted and hugged them both, while I stared at Jaden in bewilderment. Don't get me wrong, I really want my dad to be happy, but why her? And what about me and Jaden? After that, Cynthia seemed to always be at our house, baking cakes, humming while she dusted and cleaned up, and exchanging gooey looks with my dad. Ew! Then one day, she insisted that Megan and I went wedding dress shopping with her. She tried on this one dress, and... Yeah, okay, she looked pretty good in it. But when she asked me what I thought about it, I just shook my head and said, Well, it's not very flattering, is it? She tried on several more dresses, but I managed to find fault with them all. Then, when I noticed how disheartened she looked, I patted her shoulder and said, Don't worry, Cynthia. You can always postpone the wedding until you find a suitable dress. She looked a bit taken aback, but then she just smiled at me and said, That's okay, Laura. I'm going to go with the first one. Ugh. Anyway, now the dress was chosen, so at least I could go home now, right? Wrong. As on the way home, we passed an arcade. Cynthia led us there and then excitedly challenged me to a game of air hockey. Then I said jokingly, Fine, I'll play, but if you lose, you don't deserve to be my mother. And guess what? She won! Ugh! And worse still, Megan wouldn't quit giving me dirty looks for the comments I'd made. Jeez, I was just joking. What is wrong with you today? I plopped down on the couch and blurted out everything. She'd take my side, right? Um, turns out, no, she wouldn't. What? You and Jaden aren't even official. But Dad loves Cynthia. They both deserve happiness. So stop being a brat about it. Then she stormed off to her room. Ugh, I feel like I'm going crazy. I have huge feelings towards Jaden, and I know he feels the same. So why can't my sister be mature enough to understand that and support me? I needed to vent to someone. Luckily for me, I had Stella. Why does no one care about my feelings? I can't be Jaden's sister. Um... Sorry, Lara. I don't know what to say. Suddenly, from the nearby table came a lousy voice. So that's the reason why Jaden has to hang out with you? You're pathetic, Lara. Turns out we were so lost in conversation, we didn't notice Anna and her flock sitting at the table behind us. Actually, we've been into each other for ages. It's not our fault our parents made some dumb decision. Anyway, whether we can be together or not, it doesn't change the fact that you bore him so much that he'd choose watching paint dry over being with you. How dare you! She was about to grab my hair, but right at that moment, a hand stopped her. It was Jaden! That afternoon, on our walk home, I finally came clean to Jaden. I like you a lot, 
I have always been since I first met you. I know you like me too, but you think it'll be awkward because our parents are getting married. Maybe if we just tell- Laura, you're such a sweet girl. And I do like you. But just as a sister. What? How could he say that to me? He had to like me. Didn't he? Feeling an unexplainable amount of shame and embarrassment, I ran away from him. As I lay on my bed and rubbed my tear-stained eyes, all I could think about was how unfair this was. So, by the time Dad called me down for dinner, and I walked in and saw how happy he looked, my anger got the better of me and I yelled, I hate you, and I hate Cynthia! How dare you try and replace Mom! Then I rushed back to my room. You really upset Dad. You know that, right? I didn't answer. I was also upset, but no one seemed to care about my feelings. Dad said we come first, so if you really feel this strongly about it, then he'll cancel the wedding. To be honest, I'm real mad with you right now. So? What about me? You're so immature and selfish! I didn't understand how my own sister could be so uncaring. So I screamed out. So what? You don't care that mom's being replaced by some fake woman? And what about me? Why does no one care how I feel? Oh my god, Laura, for once, this isn't about you! Megan rolled her eyes at me, then stormed off. Finally, everyone quit going on about the stupid wedding. But why didn't I feel good about this? Cynthia didn't seem to be coming round to our house anymore, and I noticed how Dad's cooking seemed to get worse and worse, until he stopped altogether and just ordered takeout. Meanwhile, Jaden wasn't anywhere to be seen at school. Stella asked around to find out where he was, and turns out he'd left, as he was moving back to his old town. No way! After school... I rushed straight over to his house and barged inside to find him and his mom packing. Are you 